Hi, Althea community. Welcome, welcome, welcome um, to our live experience. <laughs> this is our Sunday gathering. If you don't know me yet, I am the spiritual director of Althea. My name is Catherine Newell. I am here with my little cup of, uh, of tea, really not of Joe um, today. And I'm really excited um, to share this moment with you, to be online with, with each of you. Um, this is a really sacred moment in time. It's a brand new year. So welcome to 2022. Um, and we're also online. So congrats for joining us. <laughs> Hope you sit back and relax with your cup of tea and enjoy this sacred moment that we get to share together. Uh, I want to start out um, in 2022. I want to launch every single gathering that we have by doing a uh, land acknowledgement. And so I definitely want to start today out by doing that as well. Um, and then we'll launch into some prayer and go forth. So in this moment, wherever you find yourself, I pray that you root down in the space that you're in and feel your toes on the ground and connect to the land beneath your feet. Connect to this sacred space. And we acknowledge in this moment, the land that is under my feet and Althea's is the land that originally belonged to the Arapaho, Cheyenne and Ute communities. And so today and every day we work and we live and we meditate and we honor their contribution to this planet, their contribution to our society, their contribution to this land and to our evolution. Those are the original caretakers of this land and it's important that we acknowledge them each and every time we gather. And that being said, take a big sip of your tea and get ready for a very special prayer from our one and only Board President Rick Kitzman. Maybe, hang on, he's muted. <laughs> there we are, there we are. <laughs> Thought I did that. Good morning again and uh, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. And how about we do a, an opening prayer? <clears throat> so let us, as we always do, just breathe. That sacred inhalation and exhalation, that sacred acknowledgement of living. And as we breathe in and breathe out, let us, each in our own way, just Focus on this moment and let everything else fall to the wayside. We know that each and every one of us in our own way has been challenged with this past year, this past two years, and that with this opening of a new year, we look forward to meeting those challenges. And so I know that this is a time of opportunity, a time of acknowledgement. For we are connected to the divine. <clears throat> and no matter the problem, no matter the issue, the answers are always in the mind of spirit. And we each in our own way are a unique expression of that infinite power, that infinite source of wisdom, of knowledge, of life, of laughter, and that we can utilize that power at any given moment. And so let us renew that wisdom, that knowledge. Let us remind ourselves of our divine connection as we move into this new world, this new opening, this new presentation of another 365 or 363 days. And let us with an intention of 
life and love and laughter, present ourselves to this new year with a freshness of perspective, with a freshness of renewing our connection to the divine and expressing ourselves in such a way. And so with hearts filled with gratitude, I acknowledge this service and blessing and know that each and every participant is a blessing, that each and every one who isn't here is a blessing for our beloved Althea community. And let us just release and let go in our own way say, and so it is. And now <clears throat> we have the Althea Statement of Being. And for those of you who might be new, this is comes from our founders, uh, Melinda Carter, Nona Brooks, and her two sisters, Fanny and Alethea. And Kate Bingham also played a decisive role. So we have this feminine foundation of Althea. And so let us begin with Althea's statement of, begin, of being. God is all, both visible and invisible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. We are individualized expressions of God and are ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. All right. So now we're going to um, root that statement of being in our bodies and sing with each other as we always do. <clears throat> Sorry. COVID is everywhere. Not in this house though anymore. <laughs> um, so sing with me, The Face of God by Karen Drucker. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of love. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. Thank you all so much for singing with me, even on Facebook. Um, and now I turn it over to another board member, Bob Burka, to share with us some readings. Thank you, Captain. So I have uh, three wheat readings that Catherine has chosen today, and they're from three really magnificent beings on this planet. The first, I think most of us are familiar with, Joseph Campbell. A ritual is the enactment of a myth. And by participating in the ritual, you are participating in the myth. And since myth is a projection of the depth wisdom of the psyche, by participating in a ritual, participating in the myth, you are being, as it were, put in accord with all of that wisdom, which is the wisdom that is inherent within you anyway. Your consciousness is being reminded of the wisdom of your own life. I think ritual is terribly important. Joseph Campbell. And the next short reading is from Alan Watts. The only way to make sense out of change is to plunge into it, move with it, and join the dance. And the last short quote is from Lao Tzu. Those who flow as life flows know they need no other force. And so it is. And so it is. Amen. Um, thank you to both of you so much for joining us um, online. I am uh, really grateful to share this space with you, share this time with you. Um, and 
it's not going to be the same, but we're going to try and make some magic together. So I just appreciate your presence uh, online and through the stratosphere. It is the beauty of technology. Uh, there's a lot of downsides to, to an abundance of it, but it's really wonderful that we have this time and space together. Um, so that being said, I want to just name something as we launch into this time together that has been really hard. I had great ideas, right, for starting off the year 2022 and let's do all of our intention setting and starting out the year so positively and so uh, intentionally. And I think that we still can, but I think it's important to really to grapple with what's going on right now. There's a lot of death and destruction right at the end of the year in our community, uh, especially in Denver. We've had fires destroying almost a thousand homes just in a blink of an eye. We've had murders targeting women, people of color, um, even blocks from Althea. We've had death of amazing leaders and just famous people that have shaken us to the core or made us laugh incredibly or changed our society in many ways. We have had a resurgence of COVID. And I know this particularly um, because my partner EJ got it um, right after Christmas. So we have been quarantining. And if you are struggling through or just surviving COVID right now or someone that you love is, please know that our hearts go out to you, that we are affirming health and wellness for everyone who receives this message and everyone in the Althea community. Um, there's a lot going on. So I just want to name that as we launch into it. I couldn't really start this moment and say, yay, 2022, just leave 2021 behind. Um, there's a process of releasing that I want to go through with you to be more intentional, to really let go and release. I don't want some of the lessons and some of the things that we didn't do last year to come back up. I really want to encourage us to be fully present in our bodies and in our minds and go forth in 2022, very intentional. And mourning what happened and what didn't happen last year, including just the fires and the deaths just this week and the COVID resurgence. I always think of that, Mr. Rogers quote, uh, look for the helpers. When things are really, really dire, look for the people helping. Uh, the Althea community is known for this in Denver and I'm grateful to be a part of it. It really has been amazing to be received by you the past month, just in general. And then as we have gone on to um, changing our Christmas Eve service very last minute um, due to COVID stuff and then dealing with COVID again and going online, I've just been amazed at how many people have offered to help and support us in our communities and to reach out to those in our community that are really having a hard time during this holiday season. It astounds me the helpers that are in the Althea community. So thank you, you know who you are. This is a huge heartfelt heap of gratitude from me to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For me, I not only look for the lessons during this time or the, the, <laughs> the, the helpers, but also the lessons, um, the, really the meaning, the marrow out of what's going on. And it doesn't make it all right. And it doesn't excuse what's happening. Many things are unjust and oppressive and not okay. Um, the murders that happened in Denver were really hard to bear. And I know that a lot of people in the Althea community are directly impacted and connected to those who were killed. And there's a moment of just devastation that comes when you have everything taken from you, like a life or your home every memory. And I don't want to start out this year either too positive or too negative. You know, we're going to find moderation in 2022. And that helps me focus on the lessons and the meaning and taking out what I'm meant to see in each moment. So I always ask myself, what is bubbling up to release? When things are dying, when paradigms and physical humans and physical beings and, and, and systems and structures and homes are physically releasing, I think about what is meant to go at that time. 
it doesn't mean that we skip a bunch of the grief process at all. It means that we kind of root in it in a different way by shifting our paradigm and not just on the receiving end of the universe, just having to put up with it, but really shifting our, our way of being with the grief, being with what is. It's important. I know that we want to switch all the time to, to changing the world and to changing our paradigm so, so, so quickly that we don't sit with it for just a minute and focus on what the marrow is, what the, what the message is coming from the divine before we catapult into the next way of being. For me, um, I'm going to show you something actually, because so much of what we're talking about today is, is ritual and simple ritual that you can do in your own life. And I want to share with you one of my rituals <laughs> that I did. I don't know if you can see the ashes of, oof, of some things that I released um, on the 31st. If you haven't done this ritual, people call it all different things, burning bowl ritual, um, but you can do it in your own home, which is great. Um, please use a good bowl, fire safety. But sometimes it's time to release things physically. So what Otis and I did is on um, New Year's Eve, we lit some, some stuff on fire after writing things that we wanted to really let go from this past year. If you haven't done this ritual, I encourage you to do it. Um, sometimes it doesn't have to be lit on fire. You could just rip up the paper, whatever you wanna do. But it's a very simple, very, very profound ritual as things are literally burning, what can we really do with those ashes? How can we really look at them differently? And um, it's not about taking control or taking power over the narrative, but really working with what is already happening, right? We've already got some ashes, so why not create a few more and really work on releasing fully what is meant to let go? I always think of the phoenix. It's like my go to many times in my life, I have felt like I couldn't burn more. I couldn't deal with more and more ashes. And the Phoenix metaphor comes back and back and back. And it wasn't, you know, we can't get to the Phoenix. We can't get to this gorgeous bird on fire until we actually scorch a lot, maybe everything from the old way. So in order to rise from the ashes, we really got to think about what is burning and why. Um, so online, I don't know if I can really see your comments right now. Oh, yes, I can look. Um, but feel free to put in the chat box and engage with us. Really, what are you leaving in 2021? What are you burning that you do not want to take with you anymore? What is releasing in 2021 that you're, you know that when the clock struck midnight on 2022, that's it? January 1st, you're not taking that with you anymore. What is it? There's a lot of things I'm ready to release <laughs> in my life. I'd love to hear how it's showing up for you in your life. So feel free to engage with us fully um, online if you can, if it calls to you to do that. I wanna hear what's bubbling up for you, what matters in your world that you are releasing to make room for the new in 2022. One of the things I'm releasing is fighting. There, I'm a very feisty person. <laughs> I don't know if you know, and I love feistiness, but feisty is different than fighting. I always say, have a, be a rebel with a cause instead of a rebel without one. So this is not about not rebelling, not standing up for your beliefs, um, not, um, especially with like oppressive systems, I'm not saying don't stand up for that. I am saying that the lesson that I have learned over and over again in 2021 was that when I did push, when I did fight, it didn't really work out. Because I do think that we are co-creators with the divine. This isn't a moment of control, of taking, and it isn't a moment of victimhood either. You don't have to just accept everything that comes your way. You flow with it. You don't need to fight it. 
And flowing is not passive, okay? A lot of people think, oh, it's just like a drip, 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 just, just like let gently, gracefully flow. No, I'm thinking a raging river flow. I'm thinking of charting a Grand Canyon kind of flow, okay? This isn't passive. This isn't like you're on the end of a flow. You're flowing with spirit. This is our opportunity in 2022 to do something different. I hear a lot of people talking, and especially when I was a chaplain, I heard a lot of language around fighting cancer. And now I hear a lot of, I'm gonna fight COVID. When EJ got sick with COVID this past week, he did not fight COVID. None of us fought here. We flowed with what is, we accepted what is and moved with it. It was very scary. And I had to lean on my community. I had to lean on God and my faith. And I encourage you to do the same. Flowing doesn't mean you're not scared. And it doesn't mean that you're just letting things go. It means that you're co-creating and you're working with the energy that's already in place in your life. That you're honing into it and accessing it in a different way. For me, this shows up a lot in my form of leadership. Um, we don't really have very many leaders that are feminine or that anchor in the divine feminine that we really see a different kind of leadership. And um, it's really difficult to, to lead anything as a woman, um, but also to lead it in a different kind of way and shake up systems that are saying, hey, this is how we do things. This is what a leader looks like. This is what a politician looks like. This is what a minister looks like, whatever it is. And to shake it up and to flow instead of being dogmatic and so with this masculine energy all the time. We can flow this year. If we have learned anything in the past two years of this pandemic, it is that, right? We got ourselves here by flowing, not by fighting this. We adapt. So does this virus, apparently. All it wants to do is do its job. And all we want to do is survive. And those things seem to be at odds, but it doesn't need to be a full fight. It can be figuring it out together. That's what we're doing right now. We are virtual for your safety, for my safety, for everyone's safety, so that we can actually be together in community. It doesn't mean we're giving up on it. It means we're flowing with what is. It means we're being super, super creative. We've released that old stuff. So if you keep fighting it, you're just dredging it back up. Allow health, allow peace flow in every aspect of your being, every cell vibrates with flowing, with working with the, the universe in, in its amazing capacity. When I was a chaplain, I learned so much about how bodies work and how every single part of our body has to work together. And if one is out of alignment, it causes so many other systems to go out of whack. That should tell us something. We're designed um, creatively and intentionally evolutionary design in this body. Flow with that. Use your body as a temple, as a guide, as a way through. I want to tell you a little story <laughs> about flowing in my own life. I think it's important to be vulnerable sometimes um, and, and to really let you know that I'm on this path too, uh, with you, not separate. The past couple years, I have really struggled many, many times with job searching and finding something that really felt like a fit for me. And a lot of that came from starting a nonprofit and it not being um, perfect in, <laughs> in what it needed to be. And also, I kept applying for a lot of what I would call secular jobs. I really hate this word secular because secular and spiritual are often very similar things, but technically jobs that are not ministerial jobs, I would say. But I kept on being called to different spaces um, beyond just typical spiritual spaces. And my kiddo Otis one day asked me to share with him a spiritual story from my own life. And 
the first thing, of course, that popped into my mind was the story of when I heard the call to be a minister. When I was 19 years old, in the middle of a, a science of mind and spirit class, with Reverend Cynthia James, I heard, felt everything God was telling me to become a minister, to become a spiritual leader. And I told him this story and I've told it a million times to different people. And for the first time, I had a really strong reaction, a really emotional reaction to it, uh, to remembering it had been years. And yet I started crying immediately and realized that Otis had kind of unlocked something in me that I had forgotten about myself, my calling, that I was applying for lots of jobs and different opportunities to do all sorts of jobs which were wonderful, wonderful ways to engage in our society. And I was denying the part of me and of God that was saying, no matter what, I need to be a minister, no matter what. So I knew something was out of alignment. And about a month later, I ended up applying to be your spiritual director here at Althea. And the rest is history, you know the rest. Um, but I've been trying to really fight the call from God. Have you ever fought the call from God? This inkling, this newness that is coming forth or the remembrance of something from years ago? We don't just fight life sometimes, we, we fight ourselves. I have spent too much time doing that and I encourage you to, to not do that, to give that up, to, to release it, whether it's in a burning bowl or something else in 2022, to really just let go and flow. You will have a calling too. What have you forgotten? What do you need to reclaim? What do you need to remember? Um, if you wanna share in the chat box, I'd love to hear what you have been fighting that you're now willing to flow with. What have you been fighting that you're now ready to flow with? I am seeing a lot of people write things, this distrust of the universe, uh, need to control or question, um, letting go of how others perceive or value us of, of mean people, um, worthlessness, acting small. Thank you all for showing up, for sharing so vulnerably in this space that what you're really releasing is this old pattern, this old paradigm, burn it up. Don't fight it, just flow either. You need to do for yourself. I wanna hear that, share with our community. It helps sometimes there's someone else that really needs to see what you're sharing. That really needs to write it and go, oh my gosh, that's right. This is the year that I'm gonna just, I'm done trying to control everything. I'm done, I'm over it. Are you ready to really release it? This moment is not just about these pie in the sky things, it's about rooting in it. And that's why I practice ritual. And I often root in resilience and I call them rituals of resilience because it truly is a resilient practice. I looked at the definition of resilience because I thought you might ask about it. Um, and two things it says, resilience is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties, any issues, basically toughness. And the second definition is the ability of a substance or object to spring back into shape. So elasticity. So toughness on one end and elasticity on the other end, I think that we often think of like strength as the very masculine definition, right? Of fighting. Oh, if you're strong, you're a fighter. I think if you're strong, you're a flower. What, what about that? Let's turn that idea on its head. It doesn't have to be strong walls up. It can be strong direction, 
drive, connection, flow, the ability to spring back. That's resiliency. In this moment of unknown, and I guarantee you, everyone's saying, oh yes, 2022, so different than 2021. Maybe. We have no idea. We started this year virtually at Althea. We have no idea what's coming. And I'm not going to make a single promise to anyone out there that it's going to get different or better or whatever. We don't know. I know that you are destined to be on the planet right at this moment. I know that because you're here with me. That's what I know. That's where that resilience comes from. It's not trying to fight what is and get out of a situation. It's actually flowing with it and saying, I'm elastic, I'm tough and I can bounce back and I got this. And I'm gonna tell you the best way I know how to do this. It is ritual. I know, newsflash. <laughs> Resilience is cultivated through ritual all the time, if we're awake and aware and intentional of it. Resilience is literally created when we remember who we are. It is that remembrance. We, I feel like that's just like the lesson in life so often, right? We go through these cycles again and again, and it's about remembering and forgetting. And maybe it's a few things outside ourselves, but mostly it's remembering and forgetting who we are. So let's use rituals together to remember who we are, to come back to our center. That is the real. Everything else is a distraction. Everything else. You don't need some kind of fancy New Year's resolution thing, whatever. If you got one, great. Commit to yourself to be resilient this year. It's not about what is coming at you. It's about how you respond, bounce back be tough with flow. Rituals are, people ask me all the time about rituals. The difference between ritual and routine is intention. So step one is intention, but there are intentional pauses to make meaning in our lives. That's all. It's not something crazy. It's not something that you need to buy on Amazon. It's not something that you need to pay a shaman a million dollars to do. It's not something that you need to go to the, the, you know, the jungles of wherever. You don't need to do any of that. You can, sure, but you don't need to. I empower you, especially in this virtual space, to look around your home, look around your life, and, and just look around the room you're even in right now. And look at all the things that you could ritualize. You could make meaning. You could set an intentional pause. I lit a candle or a few, <laughs> right? I did a burning bowl, a simple thing. If you just write something on a piece of paper, it can be a ritual. Light a candle, it can be a ritual. Put a little bit of um, incense or oil in the air or on your body, ritual. It takes just a minute. It literally, it just changes you from gotta do, gotta do, gotta focus. And then oh, magic. You're creating a crevice, basically a crack in the day-to-day. -day. And it is especially hard to do that when we're home, when we're going back virtual and we're worried, okay, I, I'm just gonna be stuck in the house again. This is an opportunity for you to make magic with yourself, with your family, with your friends, virtually and safely. Joseph Campbell, as Bob quoted earlier, says your consciousness is being reminded of the wisdom of your own life. You have this wisdom. That's what ritual is. It isn't outside yourself. It isn't something crazy. It isn't something that you have to read in a book. You can. It is something so simple, so profound. What if next time you filled up your water bottle, you prayed over the water? What if next time you took your vitamins or, or the medication you have to take every morning, you prayed over that medication? Or just, if prayer is not the word that you wanna use, you could just set an intention over it. Be intentional, be awake of the tiny things, the magical things in your apartment, in your home, 
in your life, in your relationships. You have the wisdom. You actually know what works for you. For me, I told you the candle, of course, a bath, always take a bath. I'm huge on water. <laughs> Even just taking a breath is important for me sometimes. When I notice my body start to get a little oh, frantic or I have to do, when I have that feeling of I have to do something, that's when I know, I breathe even for 30 seconds. These are very simple, right? So yes, I love being in, in, in Althea's space with you. I love our building. I love the magic that we create there. But just because we're online doesn't mean we need to stop doing it. I love nature. If you get a chance to be outside, it is the one place COVID cannot get you at all. It is an absolute blessing from the divine that we live in this gorgeous state covered with snow right now, stunning. I'm a writer as well. If writing calls to you, that is a great way to ritualize moments, to also mark moments, to make meaning out of the mundane. That's what we get to do together. That's what's actually gonna remind you, root in your wisdom of who you are. Those are pregnant pauses. Those are moments that can birth something totally, totally different if you allow it to be. If you create moments for yourself, wherever you are. I would love to hear what rituals remind you of your magic. So if you do wanna share in the chat box, I would love to hear what works for you. What are, what are the rituals that are coming up for you? I will say that this Sunday ritual always reminds me of my magic. And I'm really glad that we're still doing it online and then we're revamping it and doing it in a totally different way. And if you have feedback and ideas, please let me know. I don't know about you, but I feel connected every Sunday because we have this time together at 1030. It's, it's that moment, right? Where there's magic, where there's, there's that possibility that we get to look at this moment as more than just a regular moment, but a sacred one. You have the capacity to do that at any moment, at any single time. You really, really do if you believe in it. You can make magic in your world. Simple, profound ways. Uh, let's see if I can see any comments. Let's see. Oh, I love this all about ritual magic, morning yoga, gratitude acknowledgements, walking. Yes, so good, so important. Lighting incense and candles and your altars. I love this, you guys. Writing, lots of candles, lots of writing and candles. <laughs> I love this. I'm just so proud of you, seriously. Once you have named it publicly too, now we are going to be kind of like accountability buddies to each other, reminding each other of our rituals of resilience so that we can bounce back, so that we are tough and ready and prepared for whatever this year is going to throw at us. We know how to survive this and really thrive. Rituals are the magic. They are the marrow. They are what tethers us together in these moments. I'm grateful for this ritual with each of you. So, so grateful we could spend this time together. I also want to say that even though we're online, we still really need and appreciate contributions monetarily uh, to Althea. So I want to just take a half a second to say thank you if you have donated in the past. And if you want to today, again, we would really, really, really appreciate if you've gotten any goodness or connection, um, empowerment, any kind of infusion from this experience online. Uh, we have two ways to donate now, which is really awesome. You can do it on our website, altheacenter.org, or you can text the word give to 720-547-3449. I'm gonna say it again. You can text the word give, all caps, 
to 720-547-3449. We really appreciate any and all prosperity that you flow to us because we know it comes right back to you. Really, this is a flowing opportunity to practice it right now today, to not fight the way that things are, but flow with us and encourage um, and infuse our prosperity as well as your own. What a phenomenal way to start this new year out. The last thing I do want to lift up is that since we're online, I would love to hear your prayers. I really, really, really would. So if you feel like, call this like prayers of the people, I want to hear what the people want prayed about, you know, prayed for. So if you really, something's coming up for you, I encourage you to type in the chat box what you need prayers for, what in your life, what in your consciousness, what in your community do you need connection right now? We can pray affirmatively together. Let's see, I just love all these comments, all the rituals, all the water. And showers, yes, definitely in the shower and using the mirror 100%. And sending love to other people, it's beautiful. If you have prayers that you need lifted up, write them in the text box. We are with you. We really, really are. If you need support at all, reach out to us through our website. You can contact us. Um, We have prayer partners in our community that would love to pray with you, for you. We use an amazing form of affirmative prayer that is not pleading with the universe, but co-creating a better, healthier, more aligned reality with you. If this calls to you, listen, be vulnerable with us. This is the moment, right? We're going to start the year off well and intentional and it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's really good. And I just really, really, really appreciate this community in showing up together online um, and knowing that soon, hopefully we'll be in person um, as long as we're all safe. I want to end with one of my favorite, favorite people in the world, Louise Hay. She has a quote that has kept coming up for me over and over again this past week. I wanted to share with you that as things start bubbling up and you feel maybe um, like you want to fight, um, I encourage you to use her affirmation. She has a million affirmations, but this is one of my favorites. She says, I feel safe in the rhythm and flow of ever-changing life. I feel safe in the rhythm and flow of ever-changing life. Feel free to use this again and again and again this week. Whatever you need. If you want to use it for the rest of the year, use it. Let's focus on flowing together. Chart that river. Really work with it. Flow with it. You can help guide it without controlling and constricting. Just breathe and flow. I appreciate you spending this time with me, with our board members. A huge shout out to Rick and Bob. Um, It takes a village, y'all, and we're in it together. I know that we're online, but we are definitely still together. And I am grateful for this community again and again and again for showing up and supporting each other. I want to lift up some prayers. I just want to affirm these people that they matter, that they are being vulnerable and sharing with our community. People affected by COVID, all different family members, people without homes. We lift them up. We affirm everyone infected by the Marshall Fire. I love your heart. I just want to tell you that I love these people that are sharing so much with our community online. I can feel your heart. I can feel your love from here. I pray you can feel it from me. We are connected and together in this moment. 
So before I do a final prayer, I want to remind you lovingly that if you do have an awesome intention for this year, you have a goal or maybe a couple goals that you really want support on um, helping you activate and holding you accountable, our amazing, amazing, amazing um, volunteer coordinator, Sarma, if you haven't met her, you should, she's phenomenal. She is leading accountability circles this whole month of January. They start tomorrow at 6 p.m., which is January 3rd. And we have a link um, on our website. So please go sign up for her accountability circles. If this calls to you, why not? Don't waste another moment not being held accountable for your awesome goal that we want to help you accomplish this year. Well, there's su support just right on the other side of the screen um, so we can really help each other out. Lean on us. That's what Althea is for in these moments. We might not have, we, don't, we might not be in this physical building together, but the prayers and the intention and the magic that exists in that space exists in your home right now. So wherever you are hearing this message is divinely guided and blessed. I know that to be true. Let's root in prayer one more time and say, thank you, thank you, thank you, spirit, for this sacred moment together that we are activated, aligned, flowing with absolute ease and grace into the universe, knowing that we are powerful, powerful co-creators with the divine. That this year we release what is no longer serving us, what is weighing us down, and we welcome in the resilience we root in our rituals and remind ourselves of who we are and why we are here. This is not a moment of despair. This is a moment of activation and opportunity. I'm grateful to be a part of this community that knows this truth, that embodies it, that embraces it together. We stand on a fertile ground knowing that this year no matter what comes our way, will serve for our evolution, for our awakening and our realignment. And so it is, amen. A huge, huge blessing to each of you, to your families, wherever you may be. I love you. I am grateful for you. And this community at Althea is always here, whether we're in person or online. So reach out if you need support. You are not alone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now I'm gonna figure out how to end the Zoom. This is such a good question. <laughs> um, I will do it this way, all right. Bye and take care y'all. Blessed 2022.